Hi, everybody. My name is Hannah Rose, and I'm here to talk to you about Nadezhda Krupskaya's influence on the Bolsheviks' feminism. Nadezhda Krupskaya was overshadowed by the many influential revolutionaries of her time, including her husband, Vladimir Lenin. Born in 1869, Krupskaya came from a paternal legacy of radicalism and was a teacher who taught at several academic levels. She taught at night school, educating industrial workers. In these night school teachings, Krupskaya would include Marxist ideologies, which in turn led her to meet Lenin in 1894. Throughout her political career, Krupskaya upheld that access to education was the key to the emancipation of women and the proletariat. This pedagogical lens on the class struggle and the woman question is what made her influence on the Bolsheviks party immense and legitimate. Specifically, her influence on the Bolsheviks feminism is where Krupskaya's ideologies are truly illuminated. Nadezhda Krupskaya influenced the Bolshevik feminism because she was mostly responsible for the engendering of class issues, she initiated the development of social programs, and her participation in the Rabotnista and Senate Dell. So the woman question is essentially like a theoretical problem of the time, and it's essentially a problem specifically about like women's suffrage, and it attempts to adjust the changing political, economic, and professional roles for women in society in the context of like the social and sexual liberation movement at the time. At that time, the extent of all Marxist and socialist uh, feminism was focused on mar marriage as an institution and less about uh, women themselves. It's more so about how women participate in society in the sense in their um, relationship to men. In 1898, after being arrested and imprisoned, Krupskaya was sent to exile in Siberia with Lenin. During their time together in Siberia, Krupskaya, under Lenin's advisement, wrote her first Marxist work, The Woman Worker, under the pseudonym Sevlina. Published in Iskra, which is just a, um, a, an early communist publication, Krupskaya presents a grim tableau of the experience of the peasant and factory woman in her writing. The woman in the woman worker, Krupskaya asserts that the woman, the woman worker is a member of the working class and all her interests are closely tied to the interest of that class. So this is important because Krupskaya's work was the only Russian Marxist statement on the woman question until 1910 when Alexandra Kollontai's social basis was published. Also, it was prolifer the, the woman worker was proliferated amongst male and female workers in the in industrial job in, in industrialized jobs and the peasantry so she also spread not only marxist ideas but eventually bolshevik ideologies and also the specific engendering of the working class and thus class issues influenced lenin lenin maintained that there would be an establishment of full equality of rights of men and women in the social democratic party um and the social democratic party is essentially before um is an evolution of the Bolshevik party. Lenin's assertion was added to a draft program at the Social Democratic Party's second Congress in 1903. The complete draft program called for the equality of sexes in civil and political rights and in education and included the requirements of the exclusion of women workers from harmful industries, 10 weeks of maternity leave and factory nurse, nursery facilities and women inspectors in industrialized uh, factories. After the October Revolution and the Bolsheviks came into power, Nadezhda Krupskaya continued to influence Bolshevik feminism with the development of social programs. When Russia's government was restructured, Krupskaya joined the Narkompros, known in English as the People's Commissariat for Education, in the summer of 1918. Because of prior teaching experience and her general interest in pedagogy, Krupskaya devoted herself to the creating of a humane, cultivated socialist system of education. This was nearly an impossible task as the country was economically ruined, wracked by civil war and ruled by increasingly by an increasingly dogmatic bureaucracy. While at the Narkompros, Krupskaya, Krupskaya developed two key social programs, the Komsomol and Likpes. Although the Komsom Komsomol, known in English as the Russian Communist Union of Youth, was created to entren entrench Russian youth in communist propaganda, it provided opportunities for young men and women in industrial sectors and members of the peasantry to be educated and involved in more artistic um, fields, such as like perform dance and, paint and painting, which had never been offered to them before. The other social program, Likbez, was an equally difficult undertaking at the time. 
Likbez, known, known as Down with Illiteracy, was an initiative created by Krupskia with a heavy emphasis on the importance of mobilizing uneducated rural women from peripheral Russian regions. This initiative was spearheaded um, for the improvement of literacy, overall education, and the development of class consciousness of peasant women. The development of these government-sanctioned programs allowed the Bolsheviks to expand their feminism to reach women of all ages and of the working class and peasantry. Although Kripskaya didn't necessarily influence the Bolsheviks through these actions, Kripskaya used her government position to improve the status of women in Russia, and it's still considered an influence on the Bolsheviks' feminism because these programs pull, put the Bolsheviks in good standing with the youth and peasantry of Russia at the time and enabled them to gain more support. Nerezka Krupskaya's influence on, Bolshe on the Bolsheviks' feminism can also be illuminated through her participation in the Rabotnista and the Zenitel. The Rabotnista was a monthly periodical for women, first published in 1914. The periodical was named after Krupskaya's first work, The Woman Worker. After, after the breakout of World War I, the Rabotnista's production was shut down but revived again in 1917. Many other prominent feminists of the time published work in the Rabotnista, but Kripskaya was more in the role of like a head editor or a publisher. Uh, Kripskaya's work on the Rabotnista influenced the Bolsheviks' feminism because through this publication, publication Kripskaya was again able to engender class issues. Kripskaya and the other editors at the periodical added to the general Marxist interpretation of the, uh, of the continued woman qu question with a shrewd emphasis on the importance of women joining men in the revolutionary movement. The Zenitel, known in English as the Women's Department of the Secretariat of the Central Committee, or the Department of Work Along Among Women, was a government committee responsible for the advancement of women and women workers. It was created after the Bolsheviks came into power as well. Kripskaya assisted the Zenitel, assisted the Zenitel in enacting decrees providing protection for female and child labor and establishing formal social insurance programs, including pregnancy leave for women workers, equal rights in marriage, including the right to divorce and access to abortion. Kripskaya was also influenced the creation of the first all Russian Congress of working class and peasant women in the fall of 1918. She was directly responsible for the Bolsheviks upliftment, uplift, upliftment of women through social programs and also enabled the Bolshevik government to recognize what female workers and peasant workers require in their new communist society. So overall, throughout scholarly research, Nadezka Kripskaya is represented to have lived in her husband's shadow, and that's far from the truth. Even more so, scholars gloss over her achievements in feminism and the emancip emancipation of women in Russia and tend to focus on the contributions of more prominent and radical feminists of that time, such as Clara Zetkin or Alexandra Kalantai. Despite this trend by researchers and scholars, Nedetska Kripskaya had an illustrious political career, not just because of her proximity to Lenin, but rather her devotion, devotion to the upliftment of working class women through education. Kripskaya's pedagogical approach to the woman question and the class struggle is what made her contributions to the Bolsheviks' feminism notable and significant. Nadezhda Kripskaya has influenced the Bolsheviks' feminism because she was mostly responsible for the engendering of class issues. She initiated the development of social programs and her participation in the Rebidnista and Zenitel. Overall, this seems like a, a, a random history lesson. But it's important to note here because it can be said that Nerezka Krupskaya is the first to initiate a more intersectional dichotomy of feminist issues by engender engendering class issues and how women face specific hardship due to their gender and already horrific class struggle. She also notes the struggle of the peasantry. In the peasantry, uh, at this time, they were usually located in geographical, like peripheral regions of Russia, like regions such as Siberia or really isolated areas. These peripheral regions, and then overall the pre peasantry, contained a vast member, uh, a number of ethnic minorities, which Krupskaya was aware of. With all that being said, Kripskaya was the first to initiate an intersectional approach to the woman question, which is unlike any other European feminist of the time. The only reason she isn't given credit for that is because she was a Bolshevik. The, pro her, the proximity to her husband and the lingering anti-communist sentiments from the Cold War that the West has have led to her being sidelined. But not anymore. Thanks for your time and letting me ramble about Russian history.
I hope you enjoyed this guest lecture.